Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 3 of the chapter Periodic Classification of Elements. In this video, I will tell you about the Mendeleev's Periodic Table. In the previous videos, we discussed about the earlier attempts at classification by Joe Brainer, who gave his triads and the Newland's Law's Law of Octaves. After this, I told you about Lothar Mayer's work and Mendeleev, who almost simultaneously proposed that if they arranged the elements according to their increasing atomic masses, they found a periodicity in their properties. But Lothar Mayer, his work did not get as much acclaim, or rather it got it only after Mendeleev's periodic law was published and when Mendeleev gave his periodic table, Lothar Mayer's work became slightly, it got less acclaim, but it was Mendeleev who had gone a step ahead of Lothar Mayer to classify the elements. Now, Mendeleev said that if you arrange these elements according to their increasing atomic masses, we do find a periodicity. That is, we find that after certain intervals, the element, the properties of elements are a repetition of the properties of the first one. But unlike Newlands, who said the properties are repeated after every eighth element has the properties of the first, he said the periods are not fixed. So Mendeleev gave the first law, which was known as the Mendeleev's periodic law. The law stated that the properties of elements are a periodic function of their atomic masses. He said that the properties of elements are a periodic function of their atomic masses. Now, what does this mean? It means that if you arrange the elements according to their increasing atomic masses, the periodicity is related to this increase in mass. So, in the year 1869, Mendeleev gave his periodic table. And this is known as the Mendeleev's periodic table. Today, we do not follow the Mendeleev's, uh, sorry, Mendeleev's periodic table. We follow the modern periodic table. But Mendeleev's periodic table was a massive step towards classification of elements. And let us see, what was it? I told you in the previous video that if we had to choose just one genius in all of chemistry, it would be Mendeleev. Because what he did, that was a leap into our knowledge of chemistry. It was a major leap. Although it, is, it was wrong, it is not accepted today, but from whatever prior studies we had, he took a step and with such foresight that we can definitely say that it was Mendeleev who was the biggest genius in chemistry. So let us study about this periodic law, uh, this periodic table. What did he do? He arranged elements into eight horizontal, uh, sorry, vertical rows and these 12 horizontal uh, what columns. What did he do? He arranged the elements according to their increasing atomic masses. And every row, it had two elements each. Now, hydrogen had the least mass. The next was helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, potassium, calcium, scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium. So he arranged all these elements and he arranged them according to their increasing atomic masses. But while Mendeleev was arranging these elements according to their increasing atomic masses, and while he put these vertical lines, what did he keep in mind? He kept in mind that he would put elements as the mass increased, if the properties of an element were repeated too, he would put that element below the one it was similar to. That is, he found that neon was similar to helium, sodium was similar to lithium, magnesium was similar to beryllium, Aluminum was similar to boron in its properties. So what did he do? He took some chemical properties like their formula of their oxides, the formulae of their chlorides, and then he found that if they have similar physical and chemical properties, then he would put the element which is similar in its properties below the one which it is similar to. And then he realized the periodicity. And therefore he gave the periodic law. Now what he did, he, as he did this, he was very intelligent. 
he did realize that there were limitations in our measurements. And if he found that an element had properties which did not quite match up, um, if you arrange them according to their increasing atomic masses and an element should fall before some other element but its properties do not resemble the one above it rather they resemble the one before it. I'll just give an example here. Tellurium and iodine, they have masses. Tellurium has a mass of 127.6 and iodine has a mass of 126.9. So what did Mendeleev do? He realized that although the mass of iodine is less than tellurium, iodine, the properties of iodine resemble the properties of bromine, manganese, chlorine, fluorine, and therefore he placed this element in this group. Instead of placing it below selenium, molybdenum, he said no, tellurium resembles these, so he put tellurium here while he put iodine in the next group, in the seventh group. This was his genius in a way because he did feel that more important than the uh, increasing atomic mass was the fact that they were similar in properties and therefore he placed that element that was similar in properties uh, below the one that it was similar to and at that time when such a controversy uh, appeared he ignored the increasing mass, rather he lay emphasis on the similar properties. So this was one point that you could say was a point of genius in him. He did consider the fact that there is a possibility that there might be an error in the measurement of the masses. Then there was another thing that really made us feel that mentally was a genius. And that was that as he arranged these elements and he was increasing the masses, he did not, he left blank spaces in the periodic table. And why did he leave the blank spaces? For example, after nickel, he found that here copper, copper comes in. And copper should have come here under neon. But he found that copper does not resemble neon in its properties, it resembles potassium or it resembles sodium here. So he said, it is a metal, it had properties which were different from the noble gases. So he shifted this element here and he put copper under uh, the, ne the next, um, in the next group. Similarly, he left spaces under cesium, under barium you see there are spaces. He left blank spaces all over the periodic table. Wherever he felt the element, the next element that we know of does not have the properties similar to the one above it. He just assumed that maybe we do not know all the elements. We still are not aware of all the elements that are present in the universe. So what did he feel? That let me leave a blank space, maybe someday an element maybe will be discovered. So that he did with these two elements, gallium and germanium, especially when he even predicted the properties of these elements. Gallium was under aluminum and he called it eka aluminum and germanium is under silicon and he called it eka silicon. The, the names gallium and germanium were given later when these elements were discovered. But he assumed that such an element would exist and the properties he even predicted the properties of germanium and gallium and when these elements were actually discovered at a later time their properties were found to be very similar to the ones that he had predicted. I'll just read out some of the properties. He said that the atomic weight of eka aluminum that is gallium he predicted it to be 68 and it was actually when it was found it was 70. He said the density of this element should be 5.9 and the density was find, found to be 5.94. Melting point, he said it's low and it turned out to be 302.93. While for eka silicon, he said the atomic weight is 72, it turned out to be 72.6. Density 5.5, it turned out to be 5.36. And he said the melting point would be high and its melting point actually was 1231 degrees Celsius. So the formulae of the oxides also, he said eka aluminum should have an oxide having a formula E2O3 and the uh, formula of gallium was Ga2O3. He said the formula of eka silicon that is germanium should be EO2 and it actually turned out to be GeO2. And the chloride was ECL3 He's, and it was gallium was GaCl3. 
For germanium, he said, no, it should be ECL4. And it turned out to be GECL4. So this was the genius of Mendeleev because of which we still remember and admire his work that he gave a periodic table which led us to the modern periodic table and which led us to the knowledge of the modern periodic table. Another thing that has to be taken, uh, we have to think of is that when Mendeleev gave his periodic table, the atomic structure, electrons were still being discovered. In 1869, Mendeleev gave his periodic law, but in 1897, electrons were discovered by J.J. Thomson. So all he knew at his time was atomic masses. He could not have classified elements on the basis of any other more fundamental property. So it is only later that electrons and their, the electronic configurations were discovered and then the periodic table was made according to that. So this was Mendeleev's periodic table and how his genius helped us to take another step towards the classification of elements. Thank you for watching. Please return for more videos and like my video if it helped you, subscribe to my channel and suggest it to your friends. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. I'll get back to you. Bye-bye.